How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine. This is part 18, machining the cast iron anchor link. That's the part on the left. The job starts by using the 4 inch belt sander to initially clean up the casting so I can see what I've got to play with. I prefer to do it this way and then when I clamp the piece of metal in either the chuck or the machine vise I'm holding it by the metal not just the loose sandy shale that covers the casting. And by cleaning up the surface of the casting, it makes it far easier to get the casting to run true in the chuck. This section of the video has been speeded up, just to show what's happening. You can sort of see it a lot clearer when it's going at this speed. And everything's going fine until I run out of room. So I had to reposition the tool and move the tool backwards somewhat so I could get right to the end of the piece of metal. Then I found there was a problem. The very end of this piece of metal is chilled. Chilled cast iron is when the cast iron cools too quickly. It's part of the foundry process. And it's very common in thin pieces of cast iron. I've been lucky with these castings so far, and I think this will be okay. By the feel of it, it's just localised chilling. And if I can grind off the chilling, I can probably get back to soft metal underneath. The good news is that there are very generous allowances on these castings. The thickness of this finished casting needs to be 5 30 seconds of an inch. And the casting currently is a lot thicker than that. So I can take plenty of metal off to get it to the finished size. After first using a centre drill to get an accurate centre on the work, and I'm now using a twist drill to drill all the way through. But halfway through, the drill starts making a very funny noise, so there must be a hard bit of cast iron right in the centre. But it gets through it, and this isn't a precision component. This needs to be a 3 16 of an inch hole, but that's not what the drawing says. This hole is supposed to be 9 64 of an inch in diameter, and that is to clear 4BA. And then you make a special stud that goes through into the steam chest into the cylinder casting, and it has a 2BA thread on the end of it, which has to be machined down to become 4BA, so that it can go through the 964th hole. And then, on the end of it, you put a nut. A 4BA nut, which tightens everything up and holds this part in position. I'm not going to bother doing that, I'm just going to make the stud 3 16 all the way. And while on the subject of 3 16 of an inch studs, I've just fitted a 3 16 of an inch stud, and with the help of some washers, I've tightened this stud through the hole. The nut on one end is in the chuck, and on the other end I've drilled a centre hole, and I'm using a live centre to support it, while I machine the other side. First of all, I do a longitudinal cut along the centre boss, and I get that to the size specified on the drawing, which is half an inch in diameter, and then I take one long cut all the way to the outside edge to clean up the inside face. Obviously, you can't be too brutal because this has only been spun round in the chuck on a 3 16 of an inch stud. But by being supported at the live centre end, it's surprisingly rigid. For this machining job, I'm using a replaceable tip carbide tool. But in the home workshop, it's a good idea to take it easy with cast iron and run the lathe slightly slower than it's looking like it's running at the moment. The video speeded up just so I can get through the work and show you what I'm doing. After taking the nice long smooth facing cut, I took the part out of the chuck and removed the stud and now I'm cleaning it up on the belt sander. I'm only doing it lightly, I'm not making any rash decisions and removing too much metal, I'm just getting rid of the shale. For the next job I need to be over to the milling machine. Very shortly I'm going to be holding this part in the machine vise so I can mill a slot down the centre of it. And in order to do that, I need to make sure that both of the sides are completely parallel. However skilled you may be in the art of using a 1 inch belt sander to clean up edges of pieces of metal, they're generally not going to be fully parallel. And in order for this to be securely held in the machine vise, the edges need to be parallel. So first of all I machine one side, then I turn it over and machine the other side. And this way, without any cosmetic cleaning up, you can more or less guarantee that both of the sides are going to be parallel. And if you don't believe me, try doing it and then use a micrometer. In order to cut a slot down the middle of this component, I need to mark it out to see where I'm going to be cutting this slot. My current preferred method for marking out pieces of metal, I use a Sharpie felt tip pen, 
to make a black mark on the work and then I just scratch through it with my needle file. And this method was suggested by a viewer. Now the component is tightly clamped in the old machine vise and I'm setting the end stops. These end stops are part of the milling table and you can set an end stop so that you can limit the travel of the table. I'm setting first one end, then the other end. And this will allow me to cut a slot from end to end, which will be the same. I don't have to think about when I'm getting to the end of it, whether I'm taking too much metal away or too little. By setting the end stops, it just takes the chaos factor out of the job. For doing this job, I am doing two things wrong. I should be using my Clarkson milling chuck, but I use this chuck. This is an old Jacobs chuck fitted to an R8 taper. It's really stiff. When you tighten it, you have to put a lot of pressure on it. The jaws never seem to work loose and it never drops a cutter. I would never use it on a serious piece of milling of an expensive component, but for such a thing like this, it's ideal. And the main problem is I only have imperial collets for my Clarkson chuck. By the look of it, this end mill is a six mil end mill, six millimeters in diameter which is perfect really because I get the initial cut right down the center and then I move it over first to one side and then to the other side and take fine cuts and that way I get a very good finish down either side of the slot. You've got to be quick to see this next bit. I'm using a piece of quarter of an inch brass rod to gauge the width of the slot that I'm cutting. And when the piece of brass rod goes into the slot, that's it, enough milling. I have a quarter of an inch slot. I'm rubbing the part on a piece of emery cloth just to remove the burrs because now it's going back in the machine vise. And what I'm doing at the moment is milling this component to the final finished size. And it says on the drawing that it has to be 530 seconds of an inch thick, which I think is probably a little bit thin, but I think it's best to follow the drawing. Please remember that most of these videos that I make are designed for beginners in an attempt to encourage beginners to buy some machine tools that they can comfortably afford and have a go. It really doesn't matter if you make a mess of it. The more you do it, you will get better at it and it's very rewarding when you see the finished product. After all these years, I quite like the look of newly made bits. From a load of rough castings, something's starting to emerge. It's only held together loosely, nothing's fastened. But you get the idea, this is going to work quite well. Now and again from viewers I get pearls of wisdom and I got a great comment today. The comment came from a chap whose qualifications were as long as my arm. So here's the comment followed by my reply. The comment went like this. Re the experts giving advice. I really am an expert. Institute of Mechanical Engineers, retired mechanical and production engineering consultant, taught mechanical engineering at Cambridge University for 15 years, I also ran an apprentice machine in school, EITB, and he says, there is no such thing as the right way, it's just one of many. If it works, causes no harm to a machine or an operator, it's okay. And I thought that was a really wise comment. But not wishing to be over intimidated by such a comment, I felt it necessary to reply. And I replied, I totally agree with you. Very impressive qualifications. I have four GCE O levels and a cycling proficiency test certificate and once won a national colouring competition. Oh yes, and I forgot, I have some music qualifications too. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.